A bomb threat has been reported at Chebok Stadium in Chennai. New sources claim that this is in retaliation for Pakistan's recent military losses. This isn't the only case. Hyderabad and even Bangalore have been receiving similar threats in the past few weeks. Indian intelligence agencies are on high alert. But this raises a question. Cities, especially the ones further away from the border, are they really safe in this war with Pakistan? Definitely not. These bomb threats could be anonymous, but there are certain ways in which Pakistan could use science to attack the non-border states. Historically, Pakistan's military actions were across the borders like Kargil, Uri attack and Pulwama attack. That was traditional warfare. Modern warfare is digital, airborne and long range. For instance, you might think this is a rocket, but it's not. It's Shaheen 3, Pakistan's long-range ballistic missile with a range of over 2,750 kilometers. That's enough to reach deep into South Indian cities like Chennai, Hyderabad or Bengaluru, all within its striking range. Now, this might sound like something from a war movie, but in 2006, North Korea launched a ballistic missile that flew over Japan, showing how far these weapons can really go. What makes ballistic missiles like Shaheen 3 travel a longer range? Imagine throwing a short put ball into the air. When you throw it, your arm gives it an initial push. Once it leaves your hand, the ball follows a curved parabolic path called a projectile motion. It rises, slows down, reaches a peak and then falls back all under the influence of gravity and air resistance. This happens because the horizontal motion changes slightly because of air resistance and vertical motion changes due to gravity pulling it down. Ballistic missiles also work with similar physics. Let's assume Pakistan launches a missile Shaheen 3 from Karachi to attack Kanyakumari. The missile's path has three phases. The first phase is the booster phase. This is the part where the missile's engine is on, just like your arm throwing the short put ball. It lasts about 2-3 to three minutes, during which the missile accelerates rapidly, reaching a height of 150 to 250 kilometers above the earth. Here, the engine shuts off, deploys and the missile has all the speed it needs. This moment is like letting go of a bowstring after pulling it tight. The arrow now flies freely. But unlike a short put ball or an arrow from a bowstring, which would experience a high air resistance in horizontal direction, the missile after reaching an altitude of about 80 kilometers from the earth will no longer experience air resistance. The second phase is the coasting phase. After deploying, the warhead, just like the short put ball, glides after you've thrown it. It climbs to its maximum height called the apex, which for Sahin 3 is around 450 to 550 kilometers. Remember, there is no engine in this phase. It's all inertia from that initial push. This is like when a cricket ball reaches the top of its arc after a powerful hit. Finally, the third phase, re-entry phase. Eventually, gravity pulls the warhead back to the earth. This is where things get intense. It re-enters the atmosphere with high speed. The outer shell heats up due to air friction like a meteor burning as it falls to the earth. Minor course corrections can be made using fins or thrusters, but most of the path is already locked in. Once it reaches the target, the explosion in the warhead causes massive destruction. So depending on how far the target is, the missile's booster phase will vary. For example, if Shaheen 3 missile is aimed at Mumbai from Karachi, which is about 880 kilometers away, its engine would cut off at an altitude of around 90 to 110 kilometers. But if the target is Bengaluru, which is about 1700 kilometers away from Karachi, the engine would burn longer and cut off at a higher altitude, roughly between 170 to 190 kilometers. So what will happen if Pakistan launches a missile? The moment Pakistan launches a missile, India has only a few minutes to react. But that's okay, thanks to our advanced detection systems. It will intercept the incoming missile using radars and anti-missile systems which will detect the launch, track its flight and shoot it down in one of the three phases. 
This is like trying to hit a speeding bullet with another bullet. Extremely precise and difficult. This is how it works. The ballistic missile defense system has two parts. One is the missile launcher with the missiles and another is a radar. As soon as the missile is airborne, satellite-based sensors and land-based radars swing into action. These systems detect the launch almost instantly and begin tracking its trajectory in real time. Here's where physics plays a key role. By analyzing the missile's velocity, angle and arc, our defense systems can predict its exact target. Once the target is determined, the information is sent to the command post which immediately signals our missile interceptors to launch. To improve the chances of successful intercept, multiple anti-ballistic missiles are often launched against a single incoming threat. India, like the US, uses layered missile defense system. We have Prithvi air defense system for interception in higher altitudes and we have advanced air defense system for lower altitudes. This two-layered shield increases the chances of neutralizing an enemy's missile even though several ones are fired at once. So, it's like playing duck hunt. You aim at a flying duck, but sometimes it flies too fast or too many ducks appear at once. And you miss. So in frustration, you shoot the dog. Can Pakistan strike any of the Indian cities with Shaheen 3? Technically, yes, but they won't dare to be reckless. Why? Because India will retaliate for sure. We possess missiles like Agni 5 and K4, which have longer ranges and more advanced targeting systems compared to Shaheen 3. Also, Pakistan lacks a ballistic missile defense systems like the one India has. A strike from their side could invite a devastating and decisive counterattack. Moreover, India follows a no first use nuclear policy and a strict second strike capability. It means if attacked by a missile, India will respond massively with its nuclear arsenal. If you want to know about more such war tech, comment peace. But today, beyond science, we are seeing something that's very unsettling. People in non-border states far away from the conflict zone are watching war like IPL. Let's be clear, war is no joke. No matter who wins, there is always loss. Mostly, those people who are not related to war, they are the ones who are most affected.